In this lesson on configuring DNS Part 1, we're going to look at five key areas. First of all, we'll review DNS, the domain name system, in a nutshell. We'll look at the process for installing DNS, then look at some configuration basics in Server Manager. We'll also talk about configuring DNS on the server core, and then we'll define things like conditional forwarders and root hints. Well, as I'm sure you know, DNS stands for the Domain Name System. It's also referred to as the Domain Name Service, and it's based on an older host file mechanism. Early on in the days of the Internet, or the TCP IP ARPANET, they used a host file, and we still have that, that file on our systems today, which is just mappings of IP addresses to host names. A host name like, for example, on a web server, www.palestratraining.com. Now, let me just say this. You should already be familiar with what DNS is. If it's brand new to you, then you go ahead and go up to maybe wikipedia.org or go find an online tutorial uh, because we're not going to go into the, the depths of DNS here. Uh, that's a homework assignment for you to learn about it if you aren't familiar with it. By this time in your career, you probably should be aware of it. Now, that being said, let's just cover some basics. It is a hierarchical system, so it's an inverse tree. So at the bottom here, or the root, is just a dot. And then as we work, and again, we read from right to left. So as we work our way from the right, we have the TLDs, or the top-level domains. And there's about 20 top-level domains as of summer of 2009. A lot of these you're familiar with, .org, .net, .gov, .info, .biz, .edu, .mil, and they all have their own different purposes. They organize administratively and for the content that these domains manage on the Internet. So, you know, organizations, government sites, military sites, educational sites. Dot com, of course, being the most popular. So as we move from the top level, we move from right to left. Next, we have the com. Now, as a matter of fact, if you were to go into your web browser and, and type in a URL, like http colon forward slash forward slash www.palestratraining.com, there's actually kind of a transparent or assumed dot at the end of that. That's the, the top level. So we move from right to left. Next is .com. Then we move from the top level domains. And by the way, there's a bunch of what we call root servers. And I don't know how many there are now. Maybe there's 12 or 13 root servers. And these root servers are the root servers for all these top level domains. As a matter of fact, a few years ago, there was a major attack against these root servers of the DNS uh, system and most of us didn't even realize it was going on because what happens is these root servers are actually caching information on down level servers for example servers that are responsible for palestratraining.com and so most of us never even knew it was going on now that being said under, underneath each one of these TLDs are many many associated lower level domains for example palestratraining.com or microsoft.com or cisco.com then of course under those domains are subdomains we've got dev.palestratraining.com it.palestratraining.com and what we have is just a database and this database has authority over these different namespaces these segments of the DNS namespace so not only is DNS a hierarchical system, but it's also supported by database systems. The namespace is really an overall logical area that comprises a DNS name and all of its subdomains. So palestra.com and its subdomains, this could be a namespace. And the interesting thing is we can have the DNS system or the database be responsible for all of this Okay, or we could have a database responsible for part of it, and then another database responsible for a different part of it. Okay, very flexible. Now, one of the first things you have to look at, I'm going to go ahead and clean this screen up real quick, so hold on a second. Now, when we're planning our DNS implementation for our organization, there's a couple of things we need to be aware of. There's an external DNS namespace, and there's an internal 
DNS namespace. The external namespace is interesting because it can be resolved from anywhere on the internet. So the external namespace has to be registered with the organization that does this, the IANA, the IANA. So an external namespace has to be resolved from anywhere on the internet using the different methods of recursive and iterative queries and it allows you to publish your company's domain structure using a valid DNS name on the internet. That's the external namespace. An internal namespace, these are not understandable or registered on the internet. So we can use an internal naming structure that's separate from our external naming structure. This is going to increase security in the same way that maybe using network address translation increases security by hiding our internal IP addressing structure and scheme from the outside world and translating that into a single or a handful of valid IP addresses. So a lot of organizations have a separate kind of private internal active directory internal namespace and then a separate external namespace that might be served up from let's say the DMZ and public facing DNS servers out at the perimeter of their network or their organization. Now a company can choose to have their internal namespace also be their public namespace. So uh, using Palestra Training for example, they might have Palestra Training as their external namespace, but they may have that internal namespace be something entirely different again unregistered by the IANA and not resolvable on the public internet and again part of the deployment planning of this is your organization deciding uh, how you're going to handle the internal namespace the external namespace and how that relates to Active Directory let's go ahead and look at the process of installing DNS through the server manager one thing you'll notice as you continue to come back into Windows Server 2008, and I'm using 2008 Enterprise, is that you'll be repeatedly prompted with this initial configuration tasks window to say, you know, you need to provide computer information, you might want to update this server, download and install updates, or customize this server by adding roles, features, enable things like remote desktop so they can be managed remotely from other systems and configure Windows firewall which is already on. You can see under the add roles area we can add roles like Active Directory Domain Services, DHCP server which we've already done and DNS server which is what we're going to look at here coming up. If I don't want to see this every time I can say you know what do not show this window at logon and just close out of it. Now one thing I'll say in advance is this, the Windows 2008 server, you should go ahead and configure that server with a static IP version 4 address to make sure that clients can access them. You should avoid having your DNS server, if it's a separate server for example, getting its IP address and configuration information dynamically through DHCP. This is one of those servers you want it to be statically configured with IP. Now to begin installing DNS, we're just going to go and we're going to use our famous tool, the Server Manager, under Administrative Tools, and of course Server Manager. Now as you can see here, I've already installed the DNS service on the system, and I kind of had to do that just to be able to be functional to do this particular uh, training, but I've already got the Active Directory Domain Name Services and the DNS server. We installed the DHCP server earlier and it's very similar. You just simply click on Add the Role and you choose DNS Server. Now in choosing DNS Server, the main thing I had to do is I had to say what namespace is this DNS server going to be authoritative for? And we can just expand out the roles here and expand out DNS Server all the way down there's my server name forward lookup zones and you can see I've got this hq.palestra.lab this one right here is generated internally by Windows Server 2008 MSDCS we'll talk about that one later on this server is going to be authoritative for the hq.palestra.lab now looking at this you can tell this is probably an internal namespace right because I'm using this .lab as my top level domain. My domain name is Palestra. My subdomain is HQ. So it's subdomain HQ on domain name Palestra 
on top level domain lab. So this is an internal namespace. I could not use this out on the internet because, well, dot lab 